Hi everyone, this video is going to be the introduction video to week 10 where we talk about collections, framework, and generics. So first of all, at a high level, the collections framework, it's a system of um, classes and interfaces that let you work with um, data that's iterable. And generics are ways of using placeholder classes and they're used heavily in the collections framework. But before we talk about that stuff, um, I actually want to talk about arrays and linked lists because this will put all of it in context and give you a concrete example of really how everything works and um, why we have the collections framework. So you already know what an array is. It's uh, one of the first data structures we learned. And it's a contiguous block of memory that you can randomly access. So if you have an array of integers and you say you make it 10 uh, integers long, um, you can easily get to the fifth position with one command and it doesn't take any processing power to do that because all of your array index or all of your uh, array it's just contiguously laid out together. That means it's right each piece is right next to each other, just like this diagram right here so that your computer can really quickly access them based on their index position. Now, a linked list does not operate like this. So a linked list at a high level, it's still a list. It's still storing a collection of data that has the same data type and it stores them in order just like an array does. You can store the data in an order that is preserved, but it doesn't store them in a way that they're all contiguously grouped together in memory and it doesn't store them in a way that you can easily randomly access them. So a linked list, it's actually kind of like chain links. The first link in the chain points to the next link in the chain and this, the so on and so forth after that. So in this diagram you can see we have a head of the chain of the linked list and it has a pointer to the next record. That record has some data and it has a pointer to the next record after that. That record has a data also, but another pointer. So you can see this, uh, this layout and memory, they don't necessarily have to be next to each other. Th this head could be at one point memory, this record could be very far away from it, and this next record could be also very far away from it. Um, but as long as they have the pointer to the next record, they can always find the next record. Now the trick is, if you want to get the fifth record, you can only start at the head and then traverse down through it. So you actually have to inspect five records before you're going to get to the fifth record. Now that's a problem that you don't have with an array where you can just say, give me the fifth record and go directly to the fifth record. Um, the, the trick though, the linked list gives you an advantage over adding and removing elements. Because if you keep track of the head element and you keep track of the tail element, you can always very quickly add and remove um, records and unlike an array where an array you create with a fixed size and if you want to add more records than you have size in the array you have to resize the array to a larger array copy the records over and then discard the memory of the original array so you can see that they both have their strengths and they both have their disadvantages but at a high level they do the same thing they're a list so that's kind of how collections works um, the, the array and the linked list, they both, have, they both kind of have an add element method, they both have a remove, and they both have a get, where the get is maybe an index position. And under the hood, what get is actually doing in linked list, it's traversing down through the list to find its traverse. So if you say you want the fifth record, it's going to make five hops before it finds that record. Whereas an array, it'll just go directly to it. But at a high level, you're doing the same thing. You're saying get me number five, and that's all you have to do. The implementation takes care of it. Same thing with remove. Remove might be more complicated in linked list than it is in array. And in array, if you remove something, you're really not freeing up the memory. It still exists in the memory, that, that placeholder. Um, so I guess that's a high level of, uh, or a um, kind of an idea of why you have a collections framework. And it's because we have these different data structures that essentially solve the same problem. We're storing blocks or we're storing sets of data that are the same data type or the same 
same kind of data and we want to store them all together in a grouping, um, we just maybe have different requirements about access time or like if we want to write a lot of records but we don't want to read a lot, maybe a linked list is good. But if we want to randomly access things quickly, maybe an array is better for that. So we have the same type of thing, a list, but we want to implement them differently. And that's what collections is about. So in a generic, a generic is a placeholder for a class and it's used in collections because a collection can have different types of data in it, right? So you can have an array of strings, you can have an array of integers, you can have a class called dog and you can have an array of dogs. And uh, what the what the collection what the generic does is by convention it's uh, signified with a T and you'll be able to put in say you want to declare a linked list you can declare a linked list of strings points polylines whatever kind of class you want to throw in there and your linked list will contain classes or objects of that class type so this is an actual uh, declaration of a linked list of type string strings and they're declaring it as the uh, implementation of a linked list. You can do the same thing with a different class object, for example. Um, and you can't. You can do more than just one single uh, generic. So you can have a key value where you have a, a pair, and you have a key and a value. Those are both generics, and maybe you have string and integer, or string string. Um, so you can get very very creative with uh, generics. So in, a, in generics, it, or in collections, generics are used so that you can create lists, you can create maps, and you can create sets of different types. And um, we'll see that in a second here. But the, the question is, what exactly is a collection? And in a general description, it's just a group of classes and interfaces for iterable data structures. And what that means is um, it's just data that is grouped together that makes sense to, to iterate over. So when I say iterate, I just mean loop over. Um, and we'll go through this in more detail, what it actually is an iterator, how do you create or get an iterator. But uh, this flowchart's nice if you want to look at it later. I'll put a link up to this in the video. Um, collections, they, they have an iterator they give you, and your looping constructs can actually grab this iterator and then use it under the hood to loop through the objects in a collection. That's what that for loop shorthand is when you use an iterator based for loop. Um, so let's get past this abstract part of the collections and just say what exactly what actually is a collection. And we'll talk we'll talk about uh, lists first because we just talked in depth about what is an array list and what is a linked list. So this is actually an example of declaring a list of a of an app of a kind of interface of the list and it's implementing that add method that remove method that um, that that you know an array list and a linked list could do but the actual implementation is declared as an array list so under the hood of this you'll have an array and the array will resize based on how many elements you put into it and with this one you have a linked list in the linked list there are actually nodes that link to each other in a chain so if you call get on a linked list, it'll be slower than if you call get on an array list. But you won't actually know what you're doing if you don't know what the implementation is because all you'll be calling is list.get because it's just a list. But this is the exact same. You can treat this very similarly to an array if you um, are familiar enough with an array. so. You can still just add and remove elements. You can set elements. You can get elements. It's um, it's very similar in structure. So a new thing that um, is probably new content is a map, and a map is like a key value store, uh, or a tuple if you've heard of that. It's a key that points to a value, and your key can be anything, and your value can be anything. So it's very open ended. But if, for example, we were to use an integer as the key and a string as the value, you could have an integer as say your employee ID and your string as the employee name so if you had the employee ID you could look up the employee name in this map and map map has element or map has uh, methods called get and set on it or sorry get and put and 
get takes the key and returns the value, and put takes the key and the value. So we'll do some actual in-depth uh, examples with HashMap because it's a very, very common data structure in real-world programming, and it's also a really, really common interview question. And in fact, um, if you ever go to HackerRank, which I would highly recommend, you can look through data structures and see all kinds of uh, arrays, trees, linked lists, and you'll see that um, very often, um, especially in algorithms too, you'll see very often you can use hash maps to solve problems that um, in a very fast way sometimes. Because hash, hash maps have something that's called constant time lookup, which means uh, it's very quick to look up uh, a value based on a key. And now there are different types of hash maps. You have map that essentially has get and put, and underneath you can have different implementations. So hash map is the most commonly used one. It's kind of the basic one. But there are also, there's also one called tree map, which keeps the keys in sorted order. Or there's one called hash table, which is thread safe so that all the methods are synchronized. Now you probably don't know what a thread is, and you don't know what thread safe is yet, but just FYI, this is just another type of... Uh, of map and they implement this same map interface so you can operate on them the same way although underneath under the hood basically they're they're different the way they work um, set is a uh, sets another very common uh, collection and set it's essentially an array with uh, uniqueness enforced so you can create an array of integers and set every integer in the array to 100 um, you can't do that in a set a set it uses equals dot equals to compare um, whether or not a, uh, a an element is unique across the set or not. And the idea a set it gives you um, kind of a special uh, it's just a special tool to enforce uniqueness. So sets come in handy for certain cases. Um, they're not always useful, but it's just another great tool to have. And there are different types of set. There's a hash set. It's just the most commonly used one, and it's not ordered. There's a linked hash set, and this actually has a linked list underneath of it. So, and a linked list preserves order, so it'll preserve what order you inserted things into the set. Um, same thing with tree set. It's a similar. It, it's still just implementing the set, so it enforces uniqueness, and it has a get and a and an add method. But this um this actually stores the elements sorted, just like that uh, tree map. It stores them sorted. Um, and of course there are other collections too. There are vectors, there are stacks, there are queues, and stacks just another special data structure. Um, it works on this last in first out model where you push elements in and then you pop elements out and the newest ones that go in will come out first. It's, it's, us it's useful for certain kind of computer, prob computer science problems um, and you can see that there's a whole section on HackerRank on stacks if you would like to solve stack challenges. Um, same with Q. It, Q is kind of like the opposite of a stack. Uh, you push things into the back of it and then you pop things out the front so that the oldest thing in the queue is used first. And this works just like a line at a store, right? Like you line up behind the person that got there last and um, the person that got there first is up at the cash register. So all of these are part of the collections framework and we will talk a lot more in depth about all of this in the coming videos but this is just a kind of broad overview about what is what is the collections framework what are generics and kind of why would you have uh, interfaces where they have different implementations underneath um, okay thanks for watching and uh, tune in for the next videos